And lastly, radiate light and ease and joy into your devices and out toward all the members of your artistic ensemble today. Thank you. All right, Catherine, that's the end of our video. All right, I'm bringing it back to Spotlight View. You are featured. Thank you. All right. So I think at this point, um, no, no, move to the questions. <laughs> Hold on just one second. Oh, go ahead, Melissa. Someone was speaking over you. That's okay. I was just saying, I think now um, that was what I had prepared to do the review and then um, share the, the yoga journey. And at this point, um, open up the floor for any questions or comments. Wonderful. So if this is your first time taking class with us, we are going to do this five back using the raise hand feature. Um, you can go to the bottom of your screen, click uh, the feature called participants. Up on the right hand side, you should see a button that says raise hand. Um, once your hand is raised, I'll let Melissa know that your question is going to be answered and I'll spotlight your video. All right, I'm seeing a question from Sarah Kinsey. Here she comes. Hi. Hi, friends. How are you? Um, great. So, Melissa, thank you so much, number one. Number two, I just wanted to mostly, um, I've never done warrior and half moon and triangle type poses with this sensation of flying. So that really helped me because I think sometimes when I do those poses that are sometimes difficult for me to get into or can feel start to feel static, um, the sensation of flying was really fascinating. So thank you for that. So that's really all I had to say. I just wanted to comment on that being a new, a new connection for me. Great, good, thank you so much. It's a wonderful spy back. It was also new for me. I think what I found <clears throat> was that I, as I moved from one studio to another, something from one technique was helping me to be better in the other studio and then back to the other. And this idea, as you just said, of a static pose, but the pose should always be moving. And, and yoga already believes that. It already believes that you're sending out this energy that it extends and extends and extends. For instance, corpse pose, you're not just laying there dead. You're actually energetic. Um, but the quality of movement added to it helped me quite a bit as well. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, next we're going to David. I'm spotlighting his video now. Hi, David. Hi. How are you? <laughs> um, my comment is similar to Sarah's, um, but my, uh, it's in terms of uh, molding. And I have never, not I have never, my balance was great today in tree pose. Yes, yes. Right. So and it was like a revelation of, uh, I, from what I understand about Iyengar, it, Poses are, yeah, they're active. You're always working in the pose. So we're working in it, and if, and if we add the quality of movement into working with a certain, I mean, that's obviously that's what you were doing, but it like happened for me in tree pose with my balance. So thank you. I'm so glad. Thank you, David. <laughs> yes. uh, it's, it is interesting. It's not just that the Chekhov technique makes yoga more accessible or better, although I do believe that that. Uh, can happen. It's also the back and forth nature of it um, that so many things, for instance, a lot of times with qualities of movement with new students, you'll say, and now we're going to be doing things like water, and you end up with a lot of people like s swimming um, or flying like birds, you know, like or airplanes. So to be given a task of a pose, an asana, and to say, this is what your task is, and then to be told to fly through the pose. It's not that I want to put strictures on artists, but sometimes artists, if you give them a prompt, they just take off. And so for me, that's what happened with the poses. Um, it was the ability to sort of release the artist from having to come up with something really good. Instead, they already had the thing, now they were going to practice. That makes sense. 
Awesome. Next, we're headed over to Jesse. And just a reminder to folks, if you are unable to find the raise hand feature, you can always write a spy back in the chat and I can read it out loud. Hi, Jesse. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Melissa, I just want to say thank you so much for reminding me to start with the ideal center first. Because I think what, what was so clear to me this time uh, doing yoga that I've never really experienced before was the idea of, I don't know why I've never brought joy to yoga before, but I guess I've been trying to muscle my way through it. And then, but I completely agree with David. I, my tree pros on both legs was rock solid. And normally I'm like really good on one, but completely off on the other one. And the sense of balance between the both sides of my body yeah. was so was so clear today. And I really I would love to think that that was this real connection with the ideal center first, maybe like marrying both sides of my body. I don't know. Have you have you ever had students speak to that? Um, I yes, just in short to say yes. I think it is true. Um, I think what you're bringing up for me, and it, it isn't just yoga, it's anything that we do. Anything that we put our effort and our energy into, we need to bring it to every other thing that we do. As artists, we're used to like widening that lens and doing the big picture thing. Um, but if we have technique, so yoga technique, or if I happen to play softball, or whatever it is, <laughs> we get really, really good at something. And then we go to do the other thing and we leave that first thing over on the side. But all of the things that we learn, we should just be putting it all in there. I mean, wash your dishes like an artist. Do the things, do everything that you do with everything that you've learned and, and they can't help but be better. So yes, I think the balance gets way, way better because you're already really good in the studio. You're already a really good actor. You know how to concentrate you know how to radiate all of those things. You just needed a, this little reminder to say, wait, I already do all that stuff. Now let me bring it and do it here. Oh, look at my tree. You know, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I totally uh, agree. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, I'm headed over to Dan Hendrock. Hi, Dan. Oh my God, Melissa, I love you. Um, <laughs> I hope that's my <laughs> Melissa, thank you for that. My, my uh, question, it seems like I always have questions, so I apologize. My question is when um, applying qualities of movement to yoga specifically, um, how we can explore the staccato a little bit more, because I always find it very interesting when my students explore molding, for example, with staccato, as it tends to lend itself more towards legato movement and yeah. the discoveries that they create. I don't have a quick answer for that. Um, I, I think this might be interesting. I don't know. When we were doing expanded leg forward bend, and our, uh, my, my head, I now have my head on the floor. I didn't always. I'm glad that I do now. Because it's such a weird feeling to imagine <clears throat> um, movement because I'm still. So I wonder if you could imagine staccato movement. You know, I mean, if, if I'm already imagining radiating down into the ground, what if I'm, you know, like imagining a staccato burst of radiation? What if radiating can be done either staccato or legato? And so your form can be still, but the energy is moving and can still move in different tempos, I wonder. I'm going to try that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> See how it goes. Let me know. Yeah. Oh, I will say, um, so I had to make a little promise to myself 10 weeks ago when we locked down that I would not just eat and, and lay and watch I, because I am prone to falling into that kind of terrible behavior on a constant basis. So I made myself start this practice and I said to myself, I'm going to do staccato legato every day. 
I've never done that before. If I go to a conference, then yeah, maybe I've stringed together six or seven days where I do it. When I teach, I teach on a Tuesday, Thursday. I do it then. I've even taught Monday through Friday. So I've done it five days a week for three months, but never every single day, boom, I'm doing staccato legato. So after this yoga practice, which by the way, you saw a shortened version of it today. It's actually about 10 minutes longer with more poses. I go straight into my staccato legato. And it is so different. My experience of it is so different. It's playful, it's joyful, um, it has intention, it has fire, you know, it's, the radiating is so, so easy. So uh, this question about staccato, I wonder if you then launch straight into staccato legato, what you would experience. Sorry, I'm talking too much. You're doing great. Um, I am not currently seeing any other hands up here, so I guess last call for hands. Okay, I see Susan. Oh, um, Susan, can you start your? Yeah. Well? Oh, great. Thank it's, you. Uh, what you're talking about is inner and outer tempo. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's essentially it. You know, and and the breath, which you said you kind of inherently did, was a. <sighs> You know, if you allow the breath to be a little bit more staccato, I think that that will um, kind of invite that inner outer tempo. And I think that that might be a really interesting part of a yoga practice just in general. Yeah, you're absolutely right. All right, headed over to Nikki Ferry. Hey, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, I just did that. I'm, you can hear me, great. Um, I just, Melissa, want to thank you for this because um, I am not at all flexible. And as I'm getting older, I have really bad knees. So I recently have like been doing like starting to do 15 minute yoga on YouTube. And I, I think I'm just going to do yours now that it's going to be on YouTube because I feel like adding and acting, adding our qualities from our practice to it makes it much more enjoyable for me. And I really liked how you linked them together because it also ties in um, the higher ego, which yeah. I think is important. So thank you for sharing this because uh, I feel like it's going to help me out. And I know what you mean, like about um, I'm trying not to let myself sit around because I notice it makes me stiff. And so having like even a half an hour yeah. of a day is very important. So thank you for sharing this. You're quite welcome. And I will continue to work um, as this <clears throat> situation that we find ourselves in as artists continues, I will um, keep working on this particular intersection that I find interesting. And I will, I swear, I will write it down. I will find a way to put it all together because I think as artists, we're always looking for what we can do physically. We know we can take dance classes. Um, but there's something about yoga that's different. It's not an exercise class. It can be. You can definitely go to a yoga exercise class. But as soon as you start pursuing some of the other aspects of it, you realize that it's about humanity. It's a system that was figured out so that people would understand how to be human and how to do it. And so there are so many applicable things for an actor. And I don't say that in any way to take away from the, the nature of spiritual yoga, nor am I trying to say that you can't be a good actor without, excuse me, yoga. But there's something there that I think is very interesting that can be so rewarding for an artist, but someone who's studying human nature and who also needs to stretch, who needs to get out there and feel strong. It's not just stretching, it's strength. When you're supporting your weight on your hands, you, I, I'm starting to build muscles that I think I would build if I were in a gym. So uh, I'll, I'll continue working on it, Nikki, and I will definitely keep you in mind and share longer bits and pieces as I come up with them. <laughs> 